Hi, Mike Redding here from Using Technology Better. Welcome to part two of a five part series where we show you some simple tips and tricks that just improve your user experience when you're using web tools on the internet. Now, uh, in part one, we had a look at the Edge browser and there's some fantastic new features that you should really check out if you're working with students. You have the ability to annotate on your screen, to take web shots really easily, and then also be able to remove a whole lot of distractions. So if you haven't used a, a Microsoft browser in a long time, uh, I suggest you go back and just see, have a look and see what there is there and it's available for you. Sometimes choice is a good thing in the classroom. Today's session we're going to look at Chrome and some of the great features of Google Chrome that we can use that really helps improve efficiency. Now there are some simple things that you can do to really improve the experience that you have on the internet. Now one of those is when you're working with multiple tabs inside your Chrome browser, you have the ability to organize your tabs. So if you just simply click on your tab and drag it, you can see that I can rearrange the order of these tabs. So you might have a, se uh, a sequence that you want to work with your students, then you just uh, order those tabs in that sequence and then you would be right to go just clicking across. Sometimes what happens in the browser is we come to a tab and we accidentally click the X and we shut that tab down. What you can do is you can click on, uh, just right click on a tab that's already open and just say reopened, close tab and that tab will just reopen for you. So sometimes you do that and you go, oh no, I have to look through my history again. You don't really need to do that. Just simply right click, reopen, close tab. There's also another feature that you can use if you're using a tab that you need to go back to quite often or that you would like to load every time that you open your Chrome browser. If you just right click on a tab and then from there you say, I want to pin this tab, you'll notice that that tab shifts all the way to the left hand side of the screen. It becomes quite small, but it's just pinned there now. You can't actually shut it. So if you have some websites that you definitely don't want to shut by accident, that's a great way to be able to do that. You'll, know, you'll notice on this screen here that there are a whole lot of uh, pictures, little buttons on this screen. These are called my Chrome Web Apps. And you also see there's a lot of icons sitting across the top here in my browser. They're my Chrome extensions. And so you can add Chrome extensions and uh, Chrome apps to your account and they give you extra functionality. Now I have a list of Chrome apps and extensions and if you'd like a copy of that, just simply ask for it in the comments section below this video and I'll make sure that I send that out to you. But there are apps that you can do just about anything with. So we can take screen captures and we can annotate just like we could do in the Edge browser. Uh, we can use different apps like Mood Note for Education, for instance, which enables us to load up our slide decks and then record a voiceover over those slide decks. Now I've got a whole range of extensions up here that check the credibility of websites uh, that enable me to have the website be read to me. Now where I can use this feature here, too many tabs for Chrome, uh, is a great feature because what I use this for is that I suspend a whole lot of tabs here that I haven't had a chance to finish with and I can shut down my Chrome account, log out of, my, uh, out of Chrome, I can log out of my computer, reopen Chrome, click on that and my tabs will still be there for me. So these are the tabs that I go to quite a bit or I yet haven't had a chance to be able to access them. So lots and lots of features that you can build into your Chrome experience that just give you that more seamless and easier workflow. In lesson three, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Google Apps for Education and we're going to talk about just some of the quick tips that I've got for you around using Google Drive just to make uh, organizing your documents a lot easier, finding documents and then sharing as well. Just a couple of little tweaks that will really help, once again, your experience when using Google Drive. So I look forward to seeing you in part three.